Hey guys, got another video for you brought to you by Mr. Atkins Auto. This video is going to be on using the Hunter brake blades to machine a brake rotor. Uh, first thing that you're going to do is take out the micrometer and measure how thick the brake rotor is to determine if you can even do this. A lot of new rotors are too thin um, to machine after just one set of brake pads uh, or they're in bad shape. So check that and against factory specs before you go through all this work. Uh, the next thing is we have to clean up the pad of the rotor right here. So you're going to take your angle grinder, air sander, clean that up. You're going to flip it over and clean up inside here. And it's going to be nice, clean, smooth metal. If it's any uh, rust left, it's not going to sit straight on the brake blade. Um, to save some time, I've already cleaned this one up and gotten it ready for us. So we'll get started setting up the brake blade here. brake blade, the first thing we have to put on is our smaller inner adapter. After that, our spring is going to go on. After our spring, we're going to put our inner centering cone that goes on the inside, just like that. Then our brake rotor goes on. And our larger outer adapter and now we have to fill up any remaining space on the arbor which is what we use this for and then our arbor lock nut one side is not threaded halfway through so if there's a little bit of arbor showing um, you can use that side we're going to use the threaded portion and it is reverse thread And we take the pin and gently tighten it. All right, we are ready to start cutting this rotor here. Uh, what we need to do is set our cutting blades so that they are flush on the surface of the rotor. Normally, you would always do this with the machine running, but I'm going to do one side with it off so you can hear me a little better, then I'll have it running for the other side. This dial right here is what is going to move our cutting bits in. If you discover they're not centered, we can take this and that will allow us to move our arm left and right. And then gently snug it back down. And we'll move them in a little bit. All right, so on the right side, I'm gonna do this with the machine off. We're gonna turn the dial until the cutting bit just barely touches the surface of the rotor right there. Now you'll notice I'm not on zero on my dial and to make it more obvious I've colored my zero in black. So I'm going to hold this portion and turn this so zero is on the line. Now I know exactly where the surface of my rotor is and I can measure how deep I'm cutting into it. For the left side, I'll turn the machine on. There's the surface of the rotor. I'm gonna hold this and set that to zero. Now what we're gonna do is crank the handle to move our cutting bits all the way to the inside. Before I do that though, I want to put on my vibration bands. If you leave this off, it makes a really bad howling sound and you get a bad quality cut. So put that guy on and now we're ready to start cutting. I need to get my cutting bits all the way to the inner portion right here. Now what I'm going to do is cut in four thousandths, point zero zero four on each side. Um, each of these index lines is two thousandths, so we're going to cut in two lines. I've got it highlighted in red. 
Um, if you're a little more advanced, you might cut in deeper, but for uh, my students, I want you guys to cut in just four thousandths on each side. So here we go. Lock it in. Same thing on the left side. Lock it in. And now we're going to go ahead and move this arm over to disc. I've got the speed on this machine bumped up to its max speed. It's not going to be a very good quality cut, but for the sake of time, I'm sped it up. If you were doing this for real and you wanted to use the rotor, you would lower it way down so you get a much finer, smoother cut. Now that it's done cutting, we're going to move our arm back to off. Get this out of our way. And if we leave the rotor just how it is, um, there's a lot of peaks and valleys. You get a record effect when you step on the brakes. So we're going to use this to put a non-directional finish on it. Another option would be using the uh, layer sander. So I'm going to kick the machine back on and then use this to put on a non-directional finish. And then same thing on the other side. Now there's all these scratch marks going on various angles and we won't have that record effect taking place uh, with this rotor. So it's got scratches going many different ways. Uh, my students, this would be the tool that you could use uh, with the air compressor to achieve the same thing. Last part is we got to take this off the brake lathe. So to do that, take the band off. tool. And remember it's the reverse direction. Right. 
And there you have it. We've got a brake rotor. It would be ready to go back on the car after a little bit of brake cleaner uh, to get the dust and whatnot off. The final part for the machine cleanup is you'll see all these metal shavings. You do not want to like blow or use compressed air to blow those away, otherwise they'll end up in your eyes. Take a brush and brush them down into the funnel. Alright, there you have it guys. That is cutting a brake rotor on the Hunter brake lathe. If you have one of the old school ones, the old Amco, uh, you can see my other videos, I'll link them at the bottom, on uh, how to go about setting up and using the Amco brake lathe. Alright, there you have it. Hunter brake lathe, uh, cutting a rotor. Talk to you guys later, have a wonderful day. If you like my video, please hit like at the bottom.